What's up, y'all? So, I'm pouring solo today because um, Jeff is with Ron, who really needs a lot of friendship and love right now because we had the memorial service to his beautiful son today. Um, he just passed away, and so today's all about Ron and his horrible loss. Um, nobody ever expects to bury their kids, you know. But anyways, I'm not going to be sad about it because today we had the celebration of life in Brandon's honor, and um, that's why this is pre-recorded is because we're all hanging out with Ron. So if you guys want to see any of those festivities, check out our Snapchat. I'll show you the link to those at the end of this, or you can check it out down in the description box below. So this is the piece that I did yesterday. I did not put it up in our dust free area. So something fell in it right there in that little white spot and created a divot as well as right here, right here. These three areas have pitted on me. Um, but that's okay because I think what I'm going to do today is add a top coat um, using the same colors but in different ratios. So like yesterday the majority was this deep emerald green, which I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to mix any more of. Um, it's still tacky a little bit. Like if I push into it, I can see my fingerprint. So when it's like that, I don't ever sand it down. Um, but if it were set for 24 hours, I would have sanded it down. I went ahead and mixed up my resin. This is Art Coat by Stone Coat. You can get them. Um, you can get this resin from them with um, the code YALL, Y-A-L-L, -L, in all capitals. It'll give you um, a discount off of a $100 purchase. Or you can just get it from our website. Currently, we have it in stock right now. Um, I think on this one, I'm going to lay a really thick clear coat because I want to create a really good separation between the first layer and the second layer and adding a thicker clear coat will do that. Um, one of the key things on that is when you're moving your resin around on your surface, you can use a trowel if you want to, but I always use my hands because my trowels always get too gunked up and it's not a good thing for me. So I can just use my hands and it's fine. Um, I'm not pushing it all the way to the edge quite yet because once you do that, you kind of give your resin away off of your surface. So I'm just maneuvering it around just to the edge instead of all the way over. And I'm trying to fill in any gaps that I didn't get on my initial application of the resin. There we go. You don't have to be like OCD about it. Um, resin is self-leveling in general, so even if you have what looks like a higher spot or a ridge or a low spot, as long as it's not bare and completely dry and void of resin, it's going to fall into that area really easily no stress um when you try to create that extra depth by adding a thick layer of clear it's very important to not use too much heat because the more heat you use the thinner your resin will be thus making it easier for it to roll off the canvas so keep it off the edge for as long as possible and minimal heat kind of the best way to keep it on your canvas. So I haven't even mixed up my colors yet. I'm going to do not a lot of any of them because I really like what the base layer is doing. I'm mainly just doing this to create some new depth in the piece. Excuse me. So I'm going to use some this white from Stone Coat. I have it in a squirt bottle. Just kind of easier for me to use it because the big one is kind of hard to open sometimes. 
Now when you use the stone card, stone card, stone coat base tint, you have to remember to use minimal amounts of the base tint in your resin because if you use too much, your cells won't mm, retain their circular shape and they'll just blob out forever and it'll just make your piece look cloudy. So save yourself from ruining a piece and save yourself some product and only use enough to make your resin opaque. So that's my white. I'm gonna also use the Green Meadow that I used yesterday. It's a tint from Color Obsession. I put the pipette in it backwards so it doesn't work like it should and I just haven't quite got up the gumption to put my hand around this completely saturated pipette to turn it around. This is such a great like melted Jolly Rancher green. That's all I think about whenever I use these tints from Color Obsession. Just melted Jolly Ranchers. Okay. Um, I am going to mix just a little bit of that emerald color and a little bit of the gold. Because why not? This emerald green is from Color Obsession. It is a non-metallic, non-shimmer, non-sparkly paste. It is very rich and creamy, amazing. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Typically, the rule of thumb is 10% color to resin ratio. Typically, you can do what you want to do. It's your party. Paint it how you want to. And just a little bit of the gold that I used yesterday, which is Color Obsessions 008 Pale Gold. This stuff will get away from you if you're not careful. It is a powder, so be careful when you mix it into your resin because it will float everywhere. Probably not the best thing to breathe. Um, so just be careful when you go to mix it in. Start slow so it doesn't just cloud up on you. I definitely go over the 10% rule for my golds because I feel like then I get more of this floating speckledy look. I could completely be wrong about that. That's an e-science assumption, so don't hold me to that. So it looks like I have some low spots around this edge which I'm not surprised about because I didn't really work it to that edge. So I just wanted to fill that up just a little bit before we get on with this paint application process. I don't know how I want to do this because there's so many things that I don't want to cover up. So I want to keep the majority of it as a tint. So I'm just going to run this emerald basically over the same areas where it it already was. And maybe just one random one out here. And then one random one over here. And this tint is a transparent, so I can put it anywhere and still be able to see whatever it is that's under. So I'm just basically putting it where it already was or over areas where I just want to make, I guess the design that's under it, more green. There we go. Now with metallics, I always just put thin lines because I fear it taking over. I've had issues in the past where my metallics have completely eaten up the piece, if that's even a right way to say that. So, I only put thin lines like this. Now I'm adding my this white. When you add your, if you're using a base tint, so if you're using a regular paste, you want to manipulate those on top of your other colors. Base tints, you want exactly opposite. You want them to be 
under your other colors to create the cells. So I have to apply this where I know I'm gonna push the color. So it's already white out here. So I know that I'm gonna manipulate all of the paint this way from the middle out. So that's why I'm gonna add the color on the, I mean the white on the outside of this, there and on this side of this dark color. Because I'm gonna be pushing all those colors that way. And I'm going to do exactly opposite on this side. There we go. And then I'm going to hit it with some heat and then we'll get on with the art, art, arting process. You'll see all these little bubbles pop and that's from mixing your part A and part B together as well as mixing your color in. You're basically introducing air into your resin. And it's perfectly normal. The heat's gonna get rid of all those. Don't stress about that. So now I'm gonna just push, just like I did on the first layer. Create a really nice gold wave through here. So nice. It's completely aborted from my initial plan of pushing this layer out that way but that's fine sometimes resin gives you a different idea of what you initially thought you were going to do don't feel bad it happens to everybody just go with it don't stress out don't get upset sometimes you just have to let the resin tell you what is best for your piece in my experience I just want to make sure I've got resin all the way to the edge, all the way around this piece. Now that I have the artwork on, I'm going to add some clear to where I can see that it's dry. Such a nice amount of depth in this piece now. Very happy with it. Very nice. So I'm gonna let you guys see it and then I'm gonna take it over to the dust-free area that we have set up on the other side of the shop. I'll also put a video of it on Facebook on ATD's Poor People. Let me just tilt it a little bit and give it some extra movement. I like it. I like how it looks like that gold is striated in these areas where it kind of grabs on because some of it sinks and then just get stretched. Anyways, I'm gonna go put this up. I'll be right back.
There we go. If you guys haven't seen our video on how to create your very own dust-free zone, I welcome you to check it out. It might help you in your arty endeavors. So with my extra, I'm just gonna fill up this Deruzi mold. They're so much fun to work with, even though I have no idea what I'm gonna do with them once completed. Hi, baby pup. One second, you can come say hi to everybody, okay? One second, baby moves. If you guys haven't met my pup, he wants to say hi. I know it. There's that. This. Let me get this resin off of me because you don't need any resin in your hair, tiny pup. There we go. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, where are you? Hi, baby. Can I come up here and say hi to everybody? You do. You do. Oh, goodness. There he is. He has heart condition now, so he's very delicate. But he still has a run of the house. He's my little bear, mascot of the studio. Anyways, you guys, I gotta go catch up with everybody in the memorial service. So if you want to, check out our all of these. And um, you can find us on Facebook at ATD's Poor People. It's a great group where you guys can come in, mingle, get pointers, learn pointers. It's just a great hmm, interactive and supportive group for artists that particularly are interested in pores. Um, check us out on Instagram, YouTube, obviously, you know where we are on YouTube and um, check us out on Snapchat if you want to see behind the scenes of all the things that we do. If not, you'll hear about it on Facebook or on here. Um, be kind to one another, y'all. Seriously, I've learned this over the last month. You never know what someone's going through. So be kind first. Ask questions later. Or don't ask questions at all. Just be kind because it's regular. Because you're an adult. Anyways, we love you all so, so much. And we appreciate everything you do for us. We will see you guys um, tomorrow's Monday, 8 p.m. Central Standard, Dallas, Texas, United States time. So that would be, it's 7.30 right now when I'm about to upload this. So. It'll be about the same time tomorrow. Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching from the bottom of my heart, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Crickets? No one? Moose says bye.